Hello again and welcome back to the New Creationists. I'm Eugene and today we're going to be taking another look at the Uniprot website in order to learn how to actually do some of the comparisons uh, that I made in the previous video and uh, to take it step by step for anyone who wants to check my numbers uh, or run your own comparisons. Uh, again, we're going to do a search for Cytochrome B. The reviewed, those that have been reviewed, like SwissProt is going to have a manual cur curation as opposed to an automatic curation. We'll get into that and what the difference is later. But these are simply um, proteins that have been checked manually and verified at the protein sequence level. So we're um, going to click on this. So your status here is going to be yellow star showing that these are proteins that have been manually curated. And we're going to go through and check the box and then you'll notice when we do check a box um, what happens at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so CYB, the cytochrome B for um, um, fruit fly, right here, Drosophilia uh, is going to be the um, entry name is CYB underscore Jerome and we're going to click that and at the bottom of the screen it's um, shown that one has been selected and it's giving you the entry identifier for that protein in, in the um, fruit fly. So now we can go through and just basically you'll notice CYB is going to proceed whatever the species and as we look we can also do for uh, Drosophilia simulans which is also a fruit fly we can check that one uh, if you like and Okay, yeast, you can check that. And basically, you can just go through and check, you know, looking for cytochrome B, CYB, um, and then whatever the species name is. And then keep on going. Human, CYB, human. <clears throat> and then for each one you select, it'll be added here down at the bottom of the screen. So, so far we have uh, four selected. And as you add more, the, of course, there's only so much room at the bottom of the screen. Um, some of them are going to go off the screen, but it'll still be selected. And it'll stay selected until you unselect it or hit one of these little X's. You can unselect it that way. Um, or um, by unchecking the box here on the left. Um, and the one that I unselected was um, fruit fly. We're going to select it back for now. All right. <clears throat> and then, of course, you know you can you can page through what um, by hitting the button showing uh, the manually curated genes. We've basically narrowed the search down to 299 pages, um, whereas before it was 31,234 pages. So that's one of the reasons, just by narrowing the search. Uh, you kind of narrow down the um, amount of data you're going to want to looking at. So, in order, to, and you know, you can go back later if you if there's one you missed or one that a uh, particular species for which the protein was not manually curated, but you still want to look at it. You can do that uh, later on, and I'll show you how. If um, uh, you know, you can either do a search. Let's say, for example. Um, you wanted to, you could do an advanced search, or if you just wanted to say cytochrome B reviewed, yes, and um, say for elephant, then take a second here. There you go. So now you've got elephant. Uh, so here's the entry name for the gene and the species. Uh, this is African elephant, uh, Indian elephant, a short eared elephant shrew. Okay. Uh, northern elephant seal, southern elephant seal, etc., etc., etc. Elephant's foot, which uh, I do believe is a plant. So anyhow, and that's how you can get to um, some of those. So we can say, um, in this case, we can say uh, we want to check elephant. Maybe we want to check Indian elephant. Maybe we want to check um, short-eared elephant shrew if you like and so forth so that way now that you have these checked off they're added to the bottom of the screen in this little green area you can look at all the ones you have checked off here 
um, unless it wraps. Um, I think you know. I think there's like the, a limit to it. I think it's 25. I can't remember exactly. I know when I was doing some of the you know, searches, it would cut it off uh, once the uh, queue got full. So, but anyhow, we're just going to go click on align which is going to give us an alignment of all the boxes, all the species for the cytochrome B that we have checked. That's going to take a second to uh, run through. And while it's running through, we're going to look, let's say we look at um, a spreadsheet. So you can set up a spreadsheet. What I have here is uh, basically a spreadsheet of some of the species that I was interested in looking at the cytochrome B. Uh, of course I had human so and basically I just put the uh, protein identifier here in um, uh, a column of the spreadsheet later on I'll just show you if you're uh, using Excel and uh, you just basically click um, with your mouse and um, copy all of your um, gene identifiers you can just copy that and then go back to Uniprot. Um, I'll just show you real quick. Um, and paste that here. We're going to paste it as plain text. It'll just pop it right in there for you. And that way, when you do, you can do an alignment on all those species. And we'll get to um, what you're going to do with that alignment later on. Um, but for now, we're just going to go down to the bottom of the screen because we are, we just ran an alignment of uh, these species and look to see what what it's going to give you. Of course, it's going to give you the actual alignment here. Um, then it's going to give you a tree, a guide tree here, um, which we can use later on. Drosophila. Um, so the two fruit flies here. Um, at the top is yeast uh, having a more showing a more common I mean a more recent common ancestor um, pig um, and elef um, elephant there's two of them here the African elephant and the Indian elephant and so forth um, now if you go to the bottom keep on going down the here's giving you um, the faster format for the um, alignment keep going down then you have the uh, date of job execution July 3rd uh, running time it took 12 and a half seconds um, identical positions for all these alignments uh, 142 identical positions and um, the uh, percent of identity is 36.7 roughly uh, percent of um, similarity and here at the very very bottom um, you'll see these boxes checked which were um, checked at the beginning when we were selecting species now you can uncheck some boxes let's say you uncheck all but two and now let's say we're going to compare uh, fruit fly with baker's yeast we're going to do an alignment just for those two. So we got yeast and fruit fly. Here we just skipped all the way to the bottom. There's 198 identical positions with a percent of identity. Here is 51% rounded to the nearest whole number. And then you just basically plug the number in here for, let's make that a little smaller. All right. So we got yeast and fruit fly. So fruit fly. And now I've done both sides of this chart, which just because I like, you know, aesthetically, I like it that way. So I've got 51% identity or percent of similarity rounded to the nearest whole number plugged into my chart. And then basically what you do is you'd have to go through and do for each species you want to compare, you can pull the percent of identity off of here and round it. Or... You can do um, take the identical positions and just do your own um, division, you know, like I did, like for example, over here. Um, 
like when I was comparing everything to human with human at the top of the list then all you really have to do is um, put in the identity to human in um, similarity so like you know if you were um, comparing human to fruit fly or yeast or rabbit or whatever then uh, however many positions are identical just put in this column here which is fairly simple and then of course you know if there's 380 amino acids in the protein uh, then you just divide the percent ID by the total number of amino acids and get the percent of simil similarity now, that's pretty simple so anyhow all right back to the comparison which you know I showed you to do in the um, um, distance chart so now um, if you hit the back arrow key you can just go back um, and uncheck this box and check the next box uh, for uh, fruit fly comparing fruit fly to human run your alignment again and so on and so forth and of course this is going to take another few seconds to run that through so okay here we go now we got uh, fruit fly compared to human uh, just scan all the way back to the bottom fruit fly to human percent identity is um, 59.845 percent or roughly 60 percent so human being 60% um, identical for the cytochrome B protein and um, you know you can just double check to make sure that it's human fruit fly you can check and uncheck depending on how many um, boxes you uh, want to check and what kind of uh, what kind of comparisons you're doing now once you've done and of course you know you could do that again by checking the next box um, which would be a, okay well you got two different types of fruit flies that'd be kind of interesting let's see the difference between these two fruit flies just wondering anyhow once you get all of your numbers in your um, chart then you can start comparing them because um, it actually takes a while so you know, you've got um, all your uh, identifiers here you could um, once you get your identifiers you can do your own chart and um, keep running comparisons it'll take a while actually to get like you know a, a fairly large chart like this um, but then you can start comparing like let's say cow to tarsier and um, the percentage of identity uh, is 85 percent rounded to the nearest total number and you know if you wanted to say hippo uh, compare hippo to cow you've got a 90 percent um, identity uh, or similarity rate and so on and so forth now one of the interesting things here is like baker's yeast to fission yeast because um, if you do a distance chart then you'll notice as you go across for yeast it's going to be roughly 50% similar to everything so you're going to notice like 49% baker's yeast being 49% similar to human 49% similar to chimp 48% similar to gorilla and there isn't really a whole lot of variance there you know it, it dips down to 47% up to 51% for dog 51% similar to sheep and um, so forth so it doesn't really fluctuate very much you know if you're uh, comparing yeast to uh, fruit fly it's, uh, 51 percent so once you've got everything charted out then we can start doing some trees but it's um, really kind of easy to do trees in the website itself but you're going to need more than two species to do it um, just out of curiosity we're going to go look at the comparison between the two fruit flies and uh, identical positions uh, 374 and you've got the two fruit flies at 98.94 so it's about 99 percent identical the two fruit flies um, they're both drosophilia and um, very very similar 
one of the things that I'd like to point out because you know when you start doing these you know you'll notice like these two fruit flies uh, you'll also notice if you're doing a comparison to yeast which yeast do you want to use because uh, when you go back through then um, let's say for example you were to say instead of elephant let's say yeast and do a search uh, because we were looking, um, or at least I was looking in my not, my initial search at uh, Baker's yeast. So now we've got Cytochrome B for yeast. That's the one I used, and that's Baker's yeast. And let's keep on looking down for another, let's say, fission yeast. This is another fission yeast. Let's click this one real quick. And align that. Oh, did I, how many did I click here? I think we already looked at it, but I may have backed up too far. Is it too late to do that? I don't think so. I didn't. Okay, there we go. Try it again. Okay, and now, um, and the reason I was saying that is because when you go do your chart, there's a couple of things that you're going to notice. Um, one is when you compare Baker's yeast to fission yeast, which I've already done. Actually, I've done two right here already. You'll notice Baker's yeast compared to fission yeast is going to be 56% similar, which is actually kind of interesting because this would put a most recent common ancestor more distant, that is, before a common ancestor to say human and sea urchin which is at 60 percent similarity in other words sea urchin is more similar to human than fission yeast is to baker's yeast and you know let's say for example coelacanth is more similar to human than these two yeasts are to each other because the two yeasts are only 56 percent similar but a coelacanth is 71% similar to human, 70% similar to chimp, and 70% similar to gorilla, orangutan, etc., etc., etc. So it is kind of peculiar because for two species of yeast being more distantly, according to evolution, evolutionary timeline, would be more distantly related to each other than human is to a fruit fly and yet these two are yeast and there's a considerable amount of difference between a fruit fly and a human at least most of the fruit flies that I've met if you have um, any interest in uh, going through you can um, run your own searches do your own comparisons and uh, it's really easy so um, I hope that was helpful and uh, until next time, God bless.